G'day, it's Robbie again. Well, today we're going to look at one of the most useful uh, items that you can have on a metal lathe, and that's the carriage stop. Here's my little carriage stop that I made up many years ago when I first got this lathe. And uh, every lathe should have a carriage stop. I mean, if you're doing any, uh, any, any work to a set point, whether you're boring or just turning it exter external turning or whatever, you have to have a carriage stop so you know exactly where you can uh, pull up the lathe and uh, say bottoming out jobs and stuff like this. It's, a, it's an essential item. And the pity of it is that most Chinese, in fact virtually every Chinese lathe I've ever seen never has a carriage stop, you know. They have a carriage lock quite often. Most of them these days have a carriage lock. But you don't get a carriage stop which sets the position that the carriage can go to. You don't get one. And that's a major downer. Okay, some of the lays, small lays particularly, you can buy aftermarket uh, carriage stops. Um, for them, lathes like Emco and um, stuff like that, more a bit more upmarket. But you're a cheap Chinese lathe. If you want a carriage stop, you're going to have to make one, and uh, it's a pity. They should all come with a carriage stop. It's essential. The other good thing you can do on a good modification you can uh, do to your cheap Chinese lathe is put a cross slide lock on it, so that you can lock the cross slide in in a set position. That's very very useful. Um, stops any end float uh, run out that you could get doing light work. It's very useful, particularly if you're milling or anything like that on the lathe. Once again, you don't get that, and they could easily add that. Uh, anyway, in my videos, there's a, a video showing you how to easily put a cross slide lock on your lathe, but today we're going to be looking at carriage uh, stop. And the carriage stop that I've made up is really a, a very simple one, and anybody could make one. Uh, if you have a mill would be best, but you could probably make one just using a, a file um, if you were uh, in a bit of time and patience. But basically I'll show you the design and it's basically just a show and tell. I'm not going to make one obviously. And uh, that's the guts of the, uh, the video. What do we want to have? Well we want to have something that's compact for a start. You don't want some humongous giant piece of aluminium or steel going across both of the ways. I mean, if you look on the internet, there's absolutely crap designs out there. I mean, they are total rubbish and uh, over-engineered to hell. All you want is a small sliding block that will clamp onto one of the ways and pull down hard and tight, won't damage the ways, and uh, is accessible right up to the chuck. You know, travel. I mean, basically, you know, you can see this one of mine here. Now, you'll see on mine that I don't have any hand tightening features on it. Everything on that is done with a spanner. It's done with the spanner, one of the little spanners that came with the lathe. And the reason I don't like the ones with the knobs is you just can't get your damn hand in there. When you get it up there, it's up tight enough, but a spanner will always go in. You can always get that shift. You can always get that shifter in there, and you can always pull that sucker up good and tight, so it's never going to move. I mean, the last thing you want is your carriage stop moving when you're coming in on the job and then screwing up all your settings. So, first off, I'm not one to have hand tightening stuff. I like a spanner. You pull that sucker down, she's never going to move, and. As far as designs go, I looked at all of the stuff on the internet, I looked at what was available, and basically this is the design I came up with. You can either like it or hate it, I don't really care, but I'm going to show you what it's like and you can make your own mind up. So um, basically I'll go through the features of it, I'll show you how it's designed and yeah, it's a simple little thing, easily made in, in, in spare time and uh, it should cost you nothing. All right, we'll look at the basic overview of it. So what have we got? Well, it's just as, this is as simple as it gets. It's basically, this is the side-on view, the end view. The, um, the ways are running this way. So it's clamping down on the way. 
pulling down from the top and pulling up from the bottom. So this bottom block here works exactly the same way as your carriage lock. It just exactly the same. It just pulls up underneath the the way which is sitting in here like this. And basically just clamps down on it. Now the clamping bolt is in the middle here and the pivot point is out on the on the outside of it and all it is is two little cavities and a ball bearing. That's all you need. So it's very simple. You now I have mine pulling down, clamping down from the bottom purely because I want it to go under a plate that I've got which sticks out from the um, from the uh, the carriage which keeps all the crap off of the waves. You could easily have the bolt coming down from the top exactly the same as um, as a, uh, a carriage lock and just have the nut at the top and it would just pull that pull that bottom pit and bit up from you know as you screw the, the nut up the top but I've done it this way it's a little bit more fiddly to get to but uh, it allows me to, to clear the, the plate that I've got on the uh, on the on the carriage it's a very simple setup the only tricky bit is of course you've got to do this mill out uh, the profile the 90 degree profile for the prismatic ways that's if you've got prismatic ways I mean depends what the lathe is you have to just make it to uh, suit but the design the basic design is just to basically two pieces of steel a fulcrum point and a bolt and that's it here is another bolt going through which goes through parallel to the to the, the carriageways and that is, a, is an adjustable stop right you'll see that I've also got a bracket coming out from the side of of this this unit and that, that's just bolted on with a couple of couple of little bolts and there's a hole there and a couple of holes and that's so that I can put a dial indicator on there and I can then just do very fine adjustments um, positioning um, against the dial indicator so it's just a simple addition just a bit of bent metal and a couple of holes so once again, very, 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 very useful, particularly if you're milling on a lathe because you have to do those fine adjustments. You can use your, your graduation on your hand wheel for milling, and that's not too bad. But if you want to do really fine adjustments and you want to use your dial indicator, well, put it on your, on your, uh, on your little stop here. OK, here's a view of it from underneath. You can see here's the bolt that I just used to... Uh, Tighten it and loosen it, slide up and down. It, uh, it can't mark the ways or hurt the ways. And uh, the block works on the same, exactly the same principle as the, uh, the carriage lock. Identical. And moving in on the back, you can see here's the adjusting bolt that goes through. And that is uh, simply, which have we got? That's just basically allows you to adjust through and come up against the edge of the carriage. You can see how I've got the um, plate here that just goes over the top of that. And that's why I've got the tightening bolt underneath. But you could easily put the bolt on top. Uh, you could bring this block out as far as you want and have the pivot point right out here. Um, but it's a very, as I've said, it's a very, very simple idea. I'll take it off and I'll disassemble it on the bench and I'll show you what it is. This is only going to be a short video just to show you how I did it. Um, others work on a similar principle and uh, I kept it as simple as possible, as small as possible and as easy to make as possible. So I'll take it off and we'll have a look at it on the bench. In regard to the little adjuster bolt that goes right through and is basically comes up against the side of the carriage. I have seen people use the body out of a micrometer uh, to do the same thing. Rather than use a bolt, they actually incorporate a, the micrometer body, I hope you can see that, into the, um, the body of the, of the unit. So you basically they would mount it like this, take this section off here, take the, the anvil off, um, and just mount the body in there and use the micrometer. I personally would rather use a dial indicator, uh, much easier to read, 
you, you were reading this thing upside down and back to the front for a start, mounting it this way. And also micrometer bodies, the threads in them are, are pretty lightweight. I wouldn't be too keen on banging up against them with a carriage. I don't know how long the thread would, would hold together. Um, because, I mean, you know, quite often you're using the power feed and you're coming up and it could easily put a lot of pressure on it. So I wouldn't personally go that way. It's an option. Uh, I use the, just the mount for the, uh, the dial indicator. So there you go, folks. That's it. Very, very simple. And uh, if you can't make that, well, you might as well take up knitting. So uh, anyway, that's it for me. I hope you got something out of that. And uh, I'll see you next time. Cheers.